The Doing Good Model and Essence of Life Radio present Good Talk, one-on-one -on -one conversations with leaders and various experts on the question of whether doing good is good business. And today, we have the pleasure and privilege of hosting Sherry Arison, the visionary businesswoman and philanthropist who founded the Doing Good Model. Sherry Arison is a philanthropist and a businesswoman who for the last three decades has been leading the Arison Group with the belief that every organization should bring added value to people, the community, and the environment. Sherry started creating the Doing Good Model in 1997 when she defined a distinct values-based vision for each of the Arison Group's business companies and philanthropic organizations that operate in diverse fields. Together with Arison Group CEOs, chairmen, and an academic team from some of the world's leading universities, including Harvard, Thunderbird, Bubson College, and George Mason University, the Doing Good model was finalized. The model was implemented within the Arison Group and has continued to develop beyond, extending the ripples of impact worldwide. For over three decades, Sherry Arison has proven that organizations driven by meaning, who give their employees a sense of value and care for the environment, are business thriving organizations. Hi, Sherry. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm so excited. <laughs> Can you tell us in your own words, who are you? <laughs> That's a big question. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We have so many different hats. Um, I would say on a soul level, right. uh, I'm a soul mm. in a human body coming to make a difference in the world. On a um, material level, I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother, I'm a businesswoman, I'm a philanthropist, I'm spiritual, I write books. There's so many facets of who I am. Uh, it's a question that could be talked about for each individual for hours. You wrote a book about it. Yes, recently. I did. Who am I really? Yeah. It's a conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote the book with Norit Eldar, and it's really a conversation between two women about who am I really? And it's getting to the core, to the essence, because we have so many titles and we attach to ourselves so many different facets. Um, but who am I really in, inside myself at, at the core level, at the essence level? Okay. So, so it's, I, it's an interesting journey. Yeah. Uh, so for our listeners who are individuals, managers, employees, leaders, what would you advise for them? How can they start this journey of, of, the, of the question, who am I? I think, first of all, when you talk about business or organizations, it's con connecting to your passion, mm -hmm. to your, your true essence, to your true belief of who you are and who you want to be in the world. Um, I think so many of us you know, go to work, or whether it's school or work or at home, and we go through the motion of what we were taught to be or what is expected of ourselves. And I would suggest that each one of us uh, connect to their own essence and their own passion. And I think we each have our own unique um, perspective and our own unique, um, that something special, that essence, that color, um, that design of who we are and what we bring to the world. And together it makes a magnificent puzzle. Really, when, when you connect to your passion, it becomes very, and, and to your true desire, your true want. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not talking about outside, yeah. you know, I want a relationship or I want a house or I want a car. I'm talking about what you truly want to bring into this world, who you want to be uh, within, and connect, yourself. within yourself and mm -hmm. connection to wherever you are in, to, in connection with your job, in connection to your mission in life, your purpose in life. Um, and when you connect to that purpose, I think everything else becomes very clear and, and falls into place. And more simple. Yes. All right. I've always felt that business, just like anything else, is a vehicle to create change uh, in the world. And I think that each individual business has its core purpose. So, you know, when I was in banking, for instance, you know, I said, what can the banking world bring to society? 
and really it can bring tools and education for um, financial uh, learning so that people have the education and they can make the right choices in order to grow and empower themselves whether it's in their own lives in their personal lives or in their businesses and that's something that financial institutions can bring as their core purpose um, if it's a real estate and infrastructure company um, you can bring sustainable practices and and green building so I really think that in any field in business or or any organization you have that core um, purpose of what you are doing and if you think about it as bringing added value to people to planet to the environment uh, to society at large it it creates the change and I think everyone prospers in the in in the end result so it starts with the belief yes and then goes to the being and doing just like you develop the doing good model well I think in the doing good model we have the different aspects of believing doing and being and each person is built differently each organization each structure is mm -hmm. built differently so I think each one needs to uh, look at what they're best at and and what drives them and what their purpose is and go from there because for me it might be from being or believing and from someone else it might start from doing and gradually get to the to the belief in the and the being it's mm -hmm. it's like you can go into a room from different doors so you can yeah. come into the model or into your purpose um, from a different aspect each one from their mm -hmm. own perspective Okay, but in the long run, the purpose or the goal is to reduce the gap between believing, being and doing. In your um, opinion? For me, it is because I think you know my mission has always been to create the changes within myself mm -hmm. and I do that by believing. And by being you know by resonating who I am mm -hmm. um, but in order for that to um, manifest into a business and grow into the different circles uh, of life it's a matter of doing so you have right. to take that belief and you have to take that being and put it into action and then manifest it into the doing aspect Sherry when did you first realize that you have a special mission in this world Oh, probably when I was three really? uh, <laughs> I think even as a child I I would look at the world and and I always felt like I had this unique perspective I, I couldn't understand why even children at school didn't get along why there were different groups you know wow. and you had to belong to a certain group and I um, belonged everywhere and everywhere and nowhere at the same time um, because I always believe that each one has something unique um, each group has something unique each person has something unique and I think you know if you look at it in that way it, it becomes really beautiful um, instead of looking at it as a separate you look at it as different aspects or you know different sounds different colors different different vibration um, so I I, I from a very young age I felt that I had some sort of a mission um, and as I grew older it became more and more clear to me and when I got into business and philanthropy I realized that I can bring to no matter what business it is or what organization it is um, added value added value to the people and Um, that work in the businesses uh, and organizations whether it's a management team or whether it's each individual employee um, or whether it's you know all the circles you know within you know clients um, advisors all, um, all stakeholders, all stakeholders mm -hmm. um, in ever growing you know circles um, are touched by this and I think people you You know when you touch them with with values and with purpose right. um, people connect yeah um, I think everybody's looking for purpose and values in their lives do you remember uh, something special uh, one experience from your childhood that you know resonate this energy 
Um, I, I have many. I, I really don't want to get into my childhood, but I have many. I think the main issue was the disconnect, like I said, between mm-hmm. the different groups of people and the judgment that each group had on another group or each individual on, an, on another individual. And I think that when you connect people around, like we connect people uh, through doing good, yeah. and you don't tell them how to connect, you, you let each one connect with their own individual mm-hmm. um you know their own spirit their yeah. own uh their own view and i think that's why for instance good deeds day took off so big and so well mm-hmm. because the whole idea is that everyone can do good and each one in their own way and each one according to their heart's desire mm-hmm. it's the same thing in business if you uh, have people connect to their own values and then the values of the organization and let them bring their own creativity into it you have something amazing um rather than saying it's my way you know my way or the highway no there's so many different ways so many different colors so many different aspects and if you can connect everyone um to that purpose Mm -hmm. and and to those value driven aspects of how you can make a difference. Um, I have found that in every organization and every business that I've dealt with, everyone in the end connects. Some faster, some slower, right. but in the end, everyone connects. Yeah, I think more and more CEOs and uh, senior managers um, feel these days how vision and values, organizational values are, are the essence of And the backbone of every organization and when they have it they can take it to many different ways of uh, execution that's very true but it's very important for CEOs to understand that every individual in the organization or mm-hmm. in the business um, has their own individual values and somehow we all need to connect the individual right. values with mm-hmm. the values of the organization because a lot of times a business will have you know they'll have a mission statement they'll have a purpose and and it'll be a plaque on the wall and you can see that the employees are just going through the motions they're not really connected mm-hmm. but if you help you know bring out their own, Uh, values their own creativity their own passion. purpose and yeah. passion mm-hmm. and connect that to the purpose and passion and mission and vision of the organization of the business uh, you find that it's a win-win all around how does your sense of mission affect your day-to-day activities oh, my mission is my day-to-day activities mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've at a very young age and every year it just gets stronger and stronger. Every day it gets stronger and stronger mm-hmm. um, is that I believe that I'm here for a reason. I believe that we're all here for a reason. And we're here really to create uh, and help the evolutionary process um, and to do good in the world. And that's a choice. That's an individual choice. Uh, we all see what's going on in the world um, and we are... all part of the larger picture and if we all choose I always say to think good speak good and do good our world will look so differently and so much better mm-hmm. and so much happier and healthier for all of us and so we each have a part to play and so I get up in the morning I'm thankful every day and I play my part and uh, so my mission is my day-to-day can you please give us some examples of activities that Uh, in Erison group outside of Erison group that resonate that um, I think inside the Erison group I mean everything that we do connects to that so you know we're sitting here at essence of life and really essence of life is here to uh, uh, give tools and uh, create awareness for in- inner peace mm-hmm. and in order to reach world peace we each need to reach our own individual peace uh, the doing good model and Um, you know you're going to be doing the podcast and when you work on it every day right. uh, gives value-based uh, I'd, I'd say a compass uh, to people and organizations on how to do good mm-hmm. uh, in their businesses in their organizations and how to connect the business uh, and implement values um, you know Arison investments we we invest in in businesses all around the world in, in funds and 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 Um, that really give added ba- value to humanity 
um, and to the environment. So, you know, we have the foundation, the Ted Arison Foundation, that really gives and makes um, impact on a philanthropic level. So everything we do in the organization, there's Ruach Tova, which is, um, which is an organization for volunteering, and they're the organization that also um, operates Good Deeds Day in Israel and around the world. Um, so really everything we do at the Arison Group is, is purpose and value-led. Uh, in my own life, I think um, I've gone from doing <laughs> 24 hours, seven days a week, doing, 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 um, more and more to being. Mm -hmm. And I think um, um, that role for me today has changed. And it's really to just um, resonate um, light and love. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my main purpose these days. When, when did it change? From doing to being and I, why? I, I, think the, I think it's something that was building up in me for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, I had sold all my operational businesses and decided to invest in a, in a way that will have impact but not, um, you know, not be an owner uh, mm -hmm. uh, rather than um, investing in things that, you know, gives me the freedom to um, make a difference but not have it on my shoulders. So that was something that, that was a decision I made years ago. Um, That's a big and one. And that was a very big decision. <laughs> um, but I think after that, the coronavirus, uh, COVID, really, um, it made the difference where I was, I was already ready for that change. Mm -hmm. um, but being home so much, um, you know, in quarantine and lockdown, and, and um, It, it really created what I was wanting for a really long time. Oh, wow. Which Thank is you, very, COVID. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I wish everybody would be healthy yeah, and, and safe. Yeah. Um, but for me, it gave me the time to sit and realize that it's not so much running around out there. Mm -hmm. It's um, what I am in here. And it's something that I always knew. Um, but this forced me to really have that quiet time to realize that I can really make a huge difference just by being quiet. And um, I don't know how many people will understand that. I hope people will. Um, but it's really what we all resonate. I think, you know, when we, um, when our purpose is love and light and making a, a, a difference in the world and, and, um, and having goodness grow in the world, um, people can feel that. And, and when they feel that, Um, they want to be part of it. And so that grows. And I think that's the way for the light to grow in the world. And, and I, I do want to say, though, because, you know, so many people, you know, look outside and what's going on in the world and, and it's not easy and there's mm -hmm. a lot of hardship and um, there's a lot of suffering. And um, um, I, I don't think we can close our eyes to what's happening in the world. Right. But in the end, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a choice where we put our focus and what we want to grow and so we can put our you know focus on everything that's hard and horrible in the world or we could put our focus on everything that's good and grow it from there um, and so that's a choice uh, we have to make and that's a choice that we can make like I said in our homes in our businesses in our organizations mm -hmm. um, it starts from the individual but then we go outward into everything that we touch Many managers are still very skeptic, and uh, we hear many cynicism. Um, so what would you say to managers, wh wherever they are, in any industry, country, about how doing good drives business prosperity? I, I have to tell you that I had, I had public companies that I was the main shareholder, and private companies, and I always heard the same thing. Oh, sustainability, you're not going to make money. Um, you know, doing good, you're not going to make money. Giving so much back to the community, you're not going to make money. And, and I always said that, you know, when you do good, good comes back to you. It's like any, any energy that you put out is going to come back to you. And I've proven um, that we made more money. Um, by doing things right, by doing things in a way that 
um, helps people and helps the planet and helps society. And I truly believe that when you do good, it, it, it comes back to you. Um, you know, again, I, I always say this, you know, people are like, oh, you know, got to make money or what about profit share? And, and I say, you know, if there's no um, planet Earth, no money in the world's going to matter. Right. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like we're all playing a part <laughs> mm-hmm. and we, you know, we need Think to take wide. care of our resources. Yeah. We need to take care of our people, um, you know, live healthy, loving, happy, prosperous lives. And and we can only do that if we have an air to breathe mm-hmm. and water to drink and food to eat and, you know, and care about our environment. Go um, to basis. You know, and and people tend to uh, like not think about that and you know only think about the bottom line yeah the bottom line is not only money there are many different bottom lines and you need to look at all the different bottom lines and and they're all important i'm not saying not make you know you're mm-hmm. a business you want to make money that's fine yeah um businesses should make money mm-hmm. um but there are other bottom lines as well that need to be looked at Well, uh, what is your vision for impacting the world through the doing good model? And what would you consider as a success? Because you founded the doing good model organization five years ago. Yes. Uh, it's five years ago, but it's more like 25 years ago. Yeah, but, but yeah. the organization. <laughs> the organization, yeah. the doing good the model started mm-hmm. five years ago. It was built step by step, stone by stone. Mm-hmm. Um, for over 20 25 years ago yeah. uh, with the different visions of the different companies at the time and the different uh, values which we're now calling elements um, <laughs> so uh, it's always been the same for me I mean everything that I do including the doing good model is making a difference so that more and more people get on board more and more companies more and more organizations get get on board and make a difference in the world because only together no individual I mean people have the power to make a difference but the we need a critical mass of people to really make a difference in the world and I think by giving the education and the tools um, to organizations to prosper on the one hand which is what they want to do mm-hmm. and yet have it value-based and have it in a way that everyone prospers the employees themselves the company um, all stakeholders and the environment um, in the end will will create a huge change in the world so for me to success is to have more and more and more businesses and organizations on board and Um, I would love to see it in the educational system in the mm. political system really in all systems um, I think the only way forward is to be a value-based society do you see the change happening oh, no wow. there's a huge change all right a huge change and you know it's funny a lot of times change is so slow mm-hmm. although now change is being very rapid but I, I would say 20 years ago it was it was going so slow that That people um, take for granted the change that's happened and don't realize they don't look back 20 years ago and see where we came from I can tell you that 20 years ago when I would talk about uh, impact investing and I would talk to all the major banks all the major funds you know different family offices I um, No one, and I mean no one, knew what I was talking about. Um, and when I came and started talking about sustainability in, uh, sustainability in Israel, nobody understood what I was talking about when I was talking about you know, water, having an abundance amount of water in the world and, and, and creating Mia at the time in order to bring an abundance. People thought about, that you're crazy. They, they, everybody <laughs> thought I was crazy. Nobody understood what I was talking about. They, they didn't understand why I wouldn't invest in certain areas areas and and the areas that I wanted to invest no banker understood what I wanted mm-hmm. today because um, I sold all the operational businesses and I invest you know with different uh, partners with different uh, banks funds VCs you know in in, in different vehicles mm-hmm. and I meet with people from all around the world and Not only do they know what I'm talking about, it's become a language that everyone understands, right. but today everybody 
goes according to the SDGs and the ESG, mm-hmm. and some more than others. I have mm-hmm. to say, some you yeah. know, it's 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 a written something written, but it's really not drilled down. It's not there yet in mm-hmm. many areas, mm-hmm. um, but at least everyone understands yeah. that's changed majorly. Now, whether they really go deep and really mm-hmm. implement, yes, there are those that do. I would love to see more. Last question for you today is, you know, an, an advice for every manager who wants to start the change, whether if it's with himself, herself, or with his or her organization or corporate, what should, what should they do to start taking this forward, the doing good DNA? I would say uh, connect to your intuition, have courage, and go with your, your beliefs, your truths. Hmm. Um, but I'm talking about pure truths from your essence, from your soul. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if, if, if the truth is going to create um, uh, conflict or, or separatism, um, that's not from the soul. So I would say really connect to your own soul your own purpose, your own passion. Go with your intu- intuition, go with your truth, and be courageous. When you say it, it sounds <laughs> very simple. <laughs> We try to help organizations uh, and managers and indiv- individuals to go there day by day, and we will continue doing that with passion, with love, with purity. Yeah. Uh, it's a process you yeah. have to understand it's a process people might hear me and see me and go oh how are you so positive or how mm-hmm. are you smiling all the time I get I get that feedback all the time um, yeah it's, an it's a point, process yeah. right. and it's a daily choice mm-hmm. a daily choice right. Sherry thank you so much thank you Afat. I appreciate your coming and I My wish uh, everybody peace and love. Me too. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.